Well, when you're working with Illustrator, obviously you want to have files that are opened. And so we're going to explore different ways that you can open and work with your different open files, as well as taking advantage of the new features of, afforded to you in Illustrator CS6 because we have the new Mercury standards and the 64-bit handling. Here we go. I'm going to open up Illustrator. And the first thing I want to do is I want to open a file. And we can go to File, Open. And that's one way to open up files. We just need to navigate to where they might be stored. I've got some in my Illustrator projects. And you just navigate through. And I've got this file called Artboard Layers Cover and Spine. I just open that up. I'm going to click on OK. I got that warning because there had been some font changes when this file was built. But here we are. We're in this file. And there it is. That's easy to open. Another option you can do is to use the bridge. Now, you can easily access the bridge with this icon here on the application board bar. Or you can even launch the bridge as a separate product. And I have mine already set up here. I launch the bridge, and then you navigate to the bridge. And I love the bridge because it's very visual. And it's an easy way to see these different files. And I can actually even select two items. I'm going to actually do that. And just press Enter. And they are going to open up. Again, you know, that same warning, just because there's some font shifting in here. And here's my three files. And these files are consolidated at the top of the screen. If I pull one down, it's floating instead of consolidated. Or I can pull it back up, and now it's consolidated again. That's the wording that they use. OK. So now I've got these files. And you can see on the tabs, there's even a close icon, which is different from the X over here at the top. This will close the whole product. Whereas the ones on these tabs, whether they're consolidated or floating, is in turn is so that you can close just that one file. Let me go ahead and close the artboard file. And there it goes. So that's pretty cool. And if I go back to File, Open, Recent, I can actually see files that I've been working on in the recent. And I could reopen them. So I have this one called Logos. And I could reopen that one. And there was even, I think, another file in there. Let's go ahead and open Recent. And I got this one called Select and Organize. I can open that up, too. Now, on the application bar, we actually have an option for managing these different files. You can see where it says Arrange Documents when I hover over it. And I have some options for Consolidate All, Tile All in Grid, Tile All Vertically. <laughs> Depending on your monitor size, some of this might be more useful than others. You can see different options in there if I go back to Consolidate All. Now, where that comes in handy is if I start moving some things around, maybe I'm trying to remove some assets around, for example, then I can come back here and reconsolidate them all. OK. I'm going to go back to this one that we started with, which was our ones with the cover here. And I'm going to make just a real simple change. Just going to move this down just a little tiny bit right there. OK, so when I move this, you're going to see that there's an asterisk. And the asterisk means that the file has not been saved. And so if I want to save that file, I could do File, Save, or even a Save As, similar to what you might expect in other products. And then the asterisk is going to go away. Or I could even do this File, Revert, and it's going to allow me to revert back to the last time I saved it. Now, this file is a little different simply because we have that issue with the fonts. I'm going to click on Open. But where you can really see it is if I come back here to my options with the logo. Actually, let's go to this one for Select and Organize. For Select and Organize, you can see there's no asterisk. I'm just going to move one of these stars just a little tiny bit right there. And you can see the asterisk shows up. I'll go ahead and do File, Save. The asterisk goes away. Now, you can still undo even after you've saved it. I can undo the move. And there's that asterisk again, because it's no longer saved. I can re-save it. OK. So we've got the undo, we got the redo. And notice the keyboard shortcuts over here on the side. Control-Z is a, the most common keyboard shortcut out there, probably people's favorite. And then this is a little different, but this is how Adobe works. In most Adobe products, the Shift-Control-Z is your keyboard shortcut for redo, or to undo your undos, really. And then you also have revert. And notice there's a keyboard shortcut here, F12. That's the function 12 key. And it will revert back to the last time you saved it. Mine's grayed out because we've saved it already. 
there's no asterisk, so there's nothing really to revert. Now, a couple other keyboard shortcuts. I've got several files in here, and one of the things that you can do is if you use Control and the F6 key, you can actually toggle through your different options. If you add Shift, you go the other direction. So that can be pretty handy. And you can also, with um, a nice mouse option, is you can group some of these, ob these files together. I'm going to pull out here my two that are related to the travel. So here's one for the traveling, and we've got the other one with our print related travel. And I can actually consolidate these two together, and you can see how these two are consolidated, and then I could even minimize them down um, and, and they're out of the way. So that could be handy if you were trying to work on some files that you want to have access to, but they're not there when you need them. And I'm going to scroll up here to the top. And I can see some of those different files. I can just go back into Cascade, Float, Consolidate All Windows, and they come all right back. Okay. And of course, I can close my files here. And we're getting, again, that warning just because of the font changes that we had. I'm just going to choose No. Won't change that. Um, one thing that's a little different if you're migrating from a previous version is there's no welcome screen anymore. So you might have um, seen this welcome screen in previous versions, but now we're going to do all the things that we need to do through our menus. And so in File, not only can you open, but you can also create new documents. And when you're creating a new document, um, you're going to notice there are several presets. So where it says Profile, you click on that drop down, and you can choose the preset that you want print, web, et cetera. And with the print, when you choose that, it, even though it says 612 by 792, that's because it's in points. If I just change it to inches, you're going to see that's 8.5 by 11, which is a standard size in the US. And I could even pick some different sizes in there. For example, a standard size in Europe would be A4 size. You go back to that letter. And you can pick different measurement options. And also, if I choose advanced, I'm going to see because it's print, it's picking the um, a color mode and raster, et cetera, that would be appropriate for a, a print workflow. If I change this from profile to web, I'm going to get some different options. One of the nice things in CS6 is this improvement in size. The default size is now 960 by 560, although you could pick some different standard sizes if you're doing a web mockup. And there's even some things, for example, video and film. And you're going to see different presets that are available for that. I guess tep most of the time, though, I'm using the print option. And let's say I want to do something that was a half size. I'm going to pick inches, and I'm going to do a half size here. And I actually can just do divided by 2, divided by 2, because il Illustrator can do all that math for me. I'm going to press the Tab key. And I'll click on OK, and I got this nice new document. When I go back to File New, Illustrator remembers the settings that you left it at. So if you're doing a new file, it's going to keep in mind what you had just done before. You can still go back to your profiles, or you can even create your own profiles or save your own profiles if you wanted to as well. Um, another nice thing that comes with Illustrator, there's templates. And these are some out-of-the-box templates that you can use to take advantage of. They give you some different layouts and sizing. And there also are some templates and sample files. And you're going to have to do a little bit of searching. But if you open up the templates, you can pretty much find the path. And it will be maybe in different places, depending on your system of Windows or Mac. But if you open up, you can see the path. And I see one here, Illustrator 64-bit, cool extras. And if I were to navigate to that through the open menu, I could actually find some samples. So let's see, Programs, Adobe. Let's see if we can find that in there. I'm going to cancel this out. And sometimes they're installed and sometimes they're not. That's another thing, too. But if we go into our Windows and we open up Program Files, Adobe, and I'm looking for that. Cool Extras, English Sample Files. How did they do that? And Sample Art. These are different options that we could open up. Let's try this one called Nature's Journey just to see what that opens up. We've got this beautiful sample in here that we can explore. And there is even a sample about how did they do that. 
and then it shows up under my recent files as well. One more thing I want to take advantage of or point out is the fact that we have a new 64-bit um, processing in Illustrator and, the, and we have also behind the scenes this Adobe Mercury engine. And what that really means is that you can have multiple files opened that are more complex or larger and that Illustrator can handle them with better memory, better results, faster preview time. And in the past, in Illustrator 32-bit, it would only process something that was, let's say, third, um, three megabytes of RAM. That's all it could handle. But if you have, if your system has more than three megabytes, or excuse me, three gigabytes, if your system has more than three gigabytes of RAM, then Illustrator can handle that, and and then you can experience a faster load time, faster rendering of certain effects, and just better overall improvement. So now you're able to open up your Illustrator files or create new files and even save them, close them, or explore some different options.